Headmaster Capasso, faculty, distinguished guests, friends and family, good evening. Class of 2009, congratulations. It is my honor and privilege to stand before you today. A few days ago, when I was thinking about what I was gonna say in this speech, I wondered, who am I to give out advice and words of wisdom? Why do I, just because I'm a valedictorian, have anything more to offer than you, my peers and classmates? I heard about a study that took place at Boston College which confirmed my doubts. The study found that while valedictorians went on to do well in college, they were, quote, not a group who were particularly creative or who would achieve great distinction in life. So here's the one thing I ask of you, class of 2009. Take the exact opposite course in life that I am supposedly fated to follow. The world doesn't need more people content to live by the rules and lead a passive and undistinguished life. Rather, we need artists, activists, teachers, engineers, people who will inspire and lead and create, and people who dare to question authority. In the words of John F. Kennedy, after the dust of centuries has passed over our cities, we too will be remembered not for our victories or defeats in battle or in politics, but for our contribution to the human spirit. I am more than confident about the abilities of the class of 2009 to contribute to the human spirit. Throughout the past four years, I have been constantly humbled by the creativity and dedication of my classmates through your endeavors in art, music, community service, and beyond. It is not a matter of intellect or natural talent, but rather passion and hard work that leads to great accomplishment. David Brooks, a New York Times columnist, recently wrote an article about the flexibility of the brain and of genius. Mozart's early abilities, he wrote, were not the product of some innate spiritual gift. His early compositions were nothing special. He would not stand out among today's top child performers. Rather, it was Mozart's intense dedication and ambition that made him one of the greatest composers of all time. Not only is innate natural ability not a prerequisite to achieve greatness, neither is high social standing or a fancy education. In a recent issue of Time Magazine, I read that the majority of the innovations and changes made to Twitter have been brought about by its users, not its founders. The author of the article said that you don't need patents or PhDs to create and innovate. In the midst of this recession, we should be comforted by the fact that the greatest sources of human capital, innovation, and creativity are not in short supply. In fact, they're within all of us. While much of what I've talked about has been focused on our future, as is only natural as a new stage of our lives looms on the horizon, maybe it's best to focus on today, the here and the now. I know I spent much of high school looking forward to the day it'd be over. I celebrated little milestones marking the passage of time. But I've learned that when you're always waiting for something better to come along, you never have a chance to enjoy the present. As John Lennon wrote, Life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. So for the moment, let's stop making other plans. Exciting and adventurous things await us. May it be college, work, military service, or travel. But for the moment, we are all here together, marking the end of four stressful and busy years of high school. That is something to truly celebrate. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2009.